Finally, we have psychosurgery. Psychosurgery involves chopping into the brain. Um, so, um, it was introduced by the Portuguese neurosurgeon, Yas Monitz. Monitz was an extraordinary man, actually. He was also Portuguese foreign minister at one time. He was a, both a politician and a neurologist. Uh, Monitz got the idea after he attended a neurology conference in Britain where somebody re- in the 1930s, where somebody presented the results of some experiments on ablating the front lobes of monkeys, and apparently the monkeys became quite subdued. And Monitz thought, gosh, that sounds like a good idea. That probably would help psychiatry. So he devised his treatment. His treatment involved, the Monitz version of the treatment involved drilling a hole in the side of the head, sticking in a knife, and wiggling it up and down. Simple as that. Um, and um, it became quite a popular treatment, uh, particularly in the United States, but it was also carried out in Britain. I've met, in my younger days, I met some elderly patients who'd re- been beneficiaries of this treatment. Um, in the United States, it was championed by a manic neurosurgeon, Walter Freeman, who used to drive around in a van which he called his lobotomy mobile, or lobotomy mobile, uh, to different hospitals to demonstrate his procedure. Uh, Freeman's version of the procedure involved giving people electroconvulsive therapy to knock them out, first of all. So electrodes put on the side of the heads, give them a massive electric shock, they would then collapse. He would then lift up the eyelid and insert a device called a lacotomy through the wall of the orbit behind, smashing into the brain, wiggle it around, take it out. You could do that, actually, if you know what you're doing. You can do that, apparently, without damaging the eye. Um, and um, Freeman boasted that he could do 25 in a day, and the operation was ridiculously cheap because you didn't require anaesthetic, and uh, the patient's tears cleaned out the wound. This chap here is Howard Duffy, who's about to have this operation. Uh, Howard is still alive, or at least he was a couple of years ago, and actually um, did a public information broadcast in the United States, which certainly was available on the internet not very long ago, in which he described his experiences. Duffy got a prefrontal lobotomy. I'm not making this up because Walter Freeman's notes are available. Duffy got a prefrontal lobotomy for falling out with his stepmother. Basically, uh, he was probably a bit of a wild boy. Uh, he didn't take very well to his parents, his dad remarrying. Didn't get on with his stepmother. They fought a lot. Stepmother goes to Freeman for advice. And Freeman says, don't worry, I can change his personality for you. And he also advised mum not to tell Howard what was going to happen because you don't want to upset him. And he was taken into the hospital and there, what's going to happen? That's Freeman's hand. He's going to hit that thing with a hammer. Um, Duffy was lucky in a way because although he said it, it dulled his senses for the rest of his life and he attributes the lacotomy to the fact that you know, he struggled throughout the rest of his life in, in employment, he was a bus driver for a while um, you know, he actually managed to make quite a good recovery uh, not everyone did uh, perhaps the most famous victim of uh, Walter Freeman was Rose Kennedy, who was the sister of J.F. Kennedy, the American president. She also was a wild child. Her dad also took her to Freeman. Freeman also said he could change her personality. Apparently, she probably wasn't the brightest kid on the block. She liked boys a bit too much. That was a severe, that was a real problem. After the operation, she was mute and incontinent for the rest of her life and spent the rest of her life in a nursing home. So that's psychiatry at the middle of the 20th century.